Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.4.1 has been out for a few weeks and iOS 17.5 beta 2 has been out for a few days, but there's even more features to talk about since the iOS 17.5 beta 2 is out what's new video. So we'll talk about features and updates and also talk about the overall experience of both as I've been using them on the 15 pro max and not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 13,000 votes and 189 comments. I've gone through every comment to determine what it's like so far. So we'll take a look at some of those a little bit later, but first I wanted to mention some Apple news and then some new features. And the first thing is Apple's store in downtown Montreal is set to move to the older heritage building. Apparently they're going to move to a nicer space and maybe redo it similar to what we have in the grand central terminal station or something along those lines. Apple has also announced they're investing $250 million into its Singapore campus for work on AI and other work. So that's something they're going to be really focusing on and pushing. And some of the biggest news this week is that Apple has allowed emulators on the app store. This is available for public releases as well as betas and currently the main one here, Delta is the top free app. So this is available now. I'm sure you've heard all about it by now, but it allows you to play different games throughout. And it's similar to GBA for iOS, allowing things such as NES, SNES, Nintendo 64, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and other things as well, if you own those games. So it has controller support as well. And there's more to come with this a little bit later. In fact, Mac rumors has actually said that the lead developer of the emulator app Provenance has told iMore that his team is working on an emulator to allow older PlayStation games, GameCube, Wii, Sega Genesis, and others, maybe Atari 2600, and maybe some older ones like Commodore as well. So all of those will be coming available soon on iOS, iPad OS, and where it's available. So that's something that's great. We've been waiting for that for years. Android has had it. Now it's finally here with iOS. Now this week, Apple put out a new video on YouTube that's talking about getting rid of leather. So they got rid of leather this past year and replaced it with fine woven. The odd thing about this sort of ad that they put out on their YouTube channel is that it never mentions fine woven. I know a lot of people, including myself, has been very critical of this material. I don't really care for the feel of it. It seems to be holding up better than many people expected, but I think they might be replacing this maybe with an alternative to leather or something else in the future. So hopefully we'll see something that's a little bit nicer as far as the texture overall and lasts even better than this one does. As far as new features this week, well, there's a new feature that's long been promised for iOS 17 that allows you to securely airplay to a hotel TV. That's finally been made available in some IHG hotels and resorts in the USA, Canada, and Mexico. Apple had a newsroom press release on it and shows how it works. Basically you use your phone to scan a QR code and then it will securely connect you to that Apple TV. It allows you to airplay directly to it and it says it's available now in more than 60 IHG properties. So that's available now. Let me know if you've used this yet. I haven't seen it myself, but it should be working as long as you have iOS 17.3 or later. Now, as far as other new features, well, this is the first time we've ever seen this. A new alt app store is now available in the EU. So I thought I'd show you what it looks like as I'm not in the European Union. And unfortunately you have to physically be there as the iPhone uses your GPS information to know that you're there. So this is what it looks like. It was sent in by a user. And if you have that option available, you'll have app installation. The alt store is now available. You can see it here and it's an alternate app store marketplace where you can download and install apps. So you'll see it has information about it. And then if we swipe over, we have additional settings for it. And then also here you can see, you can set a default app marketplace. So if you want to use the app store or the alt store, you can do that. And of course this just shows you kind of where it's located in the directory. So it allows you to install third party apps and sideload those apps. This is what we've been waiting for all along. And with iOS 17.5 beta two, in addition to this, we can sideload apps directly from a website if the developer chooses to allow that. So all of those things are available. And this is the first time we've finally seen a third party app store available. So this is great that we have it. Hopefully someday it will roll out around the world as it's great. You have this option. You don't have to use it at all, but if you want to use it, these are the options that show up with a new menu. I really wish there was a way I could test this though, outside the EU. Also a new feature that's been brought with iOS 17.5 and 17.5 beta two is for mobile device management. MDM admins are now able to have users actually use a beta version when they're setting up a device before they had to use the public version. Now they can force them to use a beta version. 
Also, iOS 17.4 NFC for third-party payments was actually added in iOS 17.4, but we haven't actually seen it yet as it hasn't been approved in the EU. However, according to Reuters, this will start to happen next month as the European Union is set to actually approve this. That will allow for third-party apps to use the NFC sensor and maybe pay using something else instead of Apple's Apple Pay. So instead of having the wallet app that we use now, you could have your own default wallet app. So it looks like if it's next month, it probably probably will launch with iOS 17.5, even though it was technically a feature in 17.4, as Apple actually had to comply with law in the European Union. Now there's even more in the code that suggests some new features coming to iOS 17.5. One of those is a new Apple Pencil with maybe some new controls, squeeze controls and more. Also there's signs of iPads that gain battery health. So unfortunately, just like we have on the iPhone 15 models with our battery health, we're supposed to get that on the iPads, but it looks like probably only the iPads that are coming out next month. So for whatever reason, they're not putting them on older devices, but it looks like if we go into our settings and go into battery, We'll have a cycle count and maybe similar options to what we have with optimized charging on the iPad, but only on the new ones. They really need to bring some of these features to the older devices. Also, there's a feature in iOS 17.5 that looks like it might make it to release that allows you to block all participants at once on a FaceTime call if you needed to do that. Also, Google recently made their own Find My Network, and within iOS 17.5, it will alert you to third-party trackers in Find My, similar to how AirTags currently do that. If you have an AirTag that doesn't belong to you that's nearby, your phone will alert you to that air tag and let you sort of disable it and stop tracking you. That will now work with third party trackers like this as well. So that's something that they're implementing in 17.5 is sort of a standard with Google along the way, which I think is a smart move. Also, iOS 17.5 could still see a couple features we haven't seen yet. I've mentioned a couple times, such as the stopwatch going into live activities, not just timers and things like that. So currently timers will, but not the stopwatch. We saw that in earlier betas of iOS 17.4, but they haven't brought it back yet. We still haven't seen Apple Music SharePlay to work with HomePod and Apple TV. Again, we could see that by the time 17.5 launches. Now, iOS 18 is said to have a couple features that we heard about this week. I made a separate video about all the features we expect, but one I wanted to mention has to do with notes. And notes in particular is said to be getting an update that incorporates voice memos directly in the app. This would allow you to put them right in the app instead of having to go into a voice memo, record it there, and then copy and paste it. So if you go into a note, when you're in your note, maybe we'll have a new menu option at the bottom to allow you to record that voice memo. Also, Notes is said to gain some sort of equation input, so you could put in an equation, work on that problem there, prove your work, maybe in school, or just work along with the calculator directly in Notes with it. This is all according to Apple Insider. So we could see that, but we do expect iOS 18 to still be a major update, as the most reliable sources that we've seen in the past are actually saying it to be one of the largest updates ever, if not the largest. Previous years, we've talked about that, but it was never from the big leakers, so this time around, I expect this to be true. If not, of course, they're going to lose a lot of credibility. And as far as releases this week, well, of course, we had a bunch of them along with iOS 17.5 beta 2, with Vision OS 1.2 beta 2, Mac OS updates, and many, many more. But we still have some issues that need to be solved in iOS 17.4.1, so we could see an iOS 17.4.2 before the final release of iOS 17.5. However, still there's no sign of it anywhere in different analytics throughout different websites, and that could just be because Apple's being a little bit more careful now, or maybe they don't have it planned and they're just waiting for iOS 17.5. So as far as iOS 17.5, we could see that release for beta 3 probably next week or the week after. We don't know if they're on a bi-weekly schedule at this point or if they're on a weekly schedule. Sometimes after beta 2, they switch to a weekly schedule, and of course we'll know that next Tuesday or Wednesday. Also, a final release is expected in early May, maybe on the 6th or the 13th. That's probably to coincide with the new iPad launch with the iPad Pro and iPad Air. So all of those things are expected. Of course, iOS 18 will be shown for the first time at WWDC on June 10th. We know that for certain. Apple's working on it. That's when they always show the next updates. So the keynote is at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And then a little bit after that keynote, we have the release. So we'll have iOS 18 beta 1 that day. And then we'll have a final public release typically before the next iPhone launch in early September. So that's the current schedule we're waiting for. 
We'll also expect some security updates with the next version of iOS 17.5, but we'll have to see what Apple does with that. We always have some security patches, and I'm still not sure why, why they're not pushing out those rapid security responses. I don't know if they've abandoned those. We've only had a couple, but so far, you'd think they could just push those out to fix those bugs on the side. As far as the experience of iOS 17.5, well, I'm hearing quite a bit of things that are good and bad from all of you on the community comments and the community poll. And most people are saying it's smoother with less stutters, but they're still there for some people on iPhone 11. You'll see, as I scroll through, it seems to be fairly smooth. If I go into things like music, go into home, things are loading. Okay. But it's not a hundred percent smooth everywhere, but it seems to be better than the previous beta. The same is true on the 15 pro max with ProMotion. It seems to be super smooth. However, some people said in games that use 120 Hertz, sometimes it seems to slow down. So that could be a processor limitation or something else going on. Typing also slows down a little bit for some in previous betas, but that seems to be fixed for the most part for many people. Again, if we go into notes and type this, is a new note. It seems to keep up a little bit better. I know many people experience this with iOS 17.4.1. Also in Apple music, people have reported that they've fixed issues where downloads over cellular weren't working properly. And also people are saying that Safari seems to be much faster this time around. So if we go to Apple, it seems to load. Okay. Scrolling is fast going into different Web pages seems to be pretty good depending on your overall connectivity, of course, but in general, people say it's a little bit faster or snappier and less bugs are there. So that's a great sign. Of course, there still needs to be some work that's done when it comes to bugs. Well, the standby bug is still there. It doesn't let you edit the clock. So if we go into standby mode here, we'll connect it, lock the screen goes into standby. We'll give it a second to do that. There we go. And if we're in maybe a different clock, press and hold, it does nothing. Tap the three dots and you can go to music, but back on the clock, you can't really do anything. You can't change it. The same is true for all of these. So for whatever reason, this hasn't been fixed yet. Once you edit it once you can't edit it again. So hopefully they fix this pretty soon. Also, one thing I've seen over and over, which seems to be worse this time around is when we go into notifications, they seem to be squared off for me. So a lot of the time they'll be squared off and just not work properly. Also the wallpaper bug is still there where it sort of desaturates. So if you watch in this area here or around the sun, there, just sort of desaturates. It's pretty obvious on this wallpaper. And then also the files app is still freezing for many when downloading a file from Safari or iCloud drive. Some people still have their widgets disappear and the blurred wallpaper sometimes doesn't work properly. So if you go in, customize, go to the home screen and blur, sometimes it's not working for some people. So lots of weird little bugs, nothing that's major other than maybe being able to edit standby mode, but it's still a little bit odd that it's doing that. There are still quite a few bugs with iOS 17.4.1. Those of course need to be fixed still with battery life for some micro stuttering, keyboard lag, AirPod connectivity, volume bugs, and much, much more. I've talked about those in the past though. So Apple definitely has their work cut out for them and maybe they're just putting all of their effort into iOS 18. As far as overall connectivity, well, as far as cellular connectivity goes, I've actually not had any issues with 17.5 beta two. Of course that can depend on your carrier, but in general, if I turn off Wi-Fi here, you'll see it connects. I have a couple bars of 5g things load nice and fast. I haven't had any issues. If we refresh apple.com scroll through, want to go to different pages. It seems to work as you would expect. So actually I would say 5g connectivity is a little bit better than Wi-Fi at this time, where sometimes that can sort of just stop and then you have to reset it and it works again. As far as AirPods connectivity, well, it seems to be pretty good overall. Of course, with all these devices here, sometimes it's a little bit slow to connect all the devices and there we go connected to the other 15 pro max first, but it seems to work. Okay. Just once in a while, it's a little bit odd. I haven't had any disconnects though, and I've been using them quite a bit lately. So that's a good sign when it comes to camera improvements. While I haven't had any delay this time around, I know some people were having delays with the camera. It seems nice and fast. You'll see there was a delay when I swiped home. That's a little bit of stuttering that I've talked about with micro stutters throughout, but opening the cameras nice and fast and being able to take a photo. As far as the actual quality of the photos, we'll take a look at a few of them here and they don't really seem much different than what we've had before. So overall seems to be doing what you would expect. I don't expect them to change much with those at all this time around. So I've had no focusing issues or anything like that. When it comes to performance, well, I mentioned that a little bit already, it seems to be pretty smooth for most with micro stutters throughout, but again, 
again, if we go back in, it seems to be plenty fast. As far as the overall heat, well, some people have had mixed results with this. With 17.4.1, some people have said that it's actually been getting worse. With 17.5 beta 2, it's been a little bit warmer than usual for me. It's a little bit warm in the room I'm in right now, maybe around 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit with all the lights on and everything. So it does feel a little bit warm, but let me show you with the thermal camera since I've been using it, holding on to it. We'll just turn the screens off for now. So it's not really doing anything. And let's take a look. And we're around 96 or 97 degrees Fahrenheit on 17.5 and about 10 degrees cooler around 86 to 87 degrees on the one that's been sitting idle with 17.4.1. Again, in Celsius, we're at about 36.5 degrees Celsius and on 17.4.1 about 31 degrees Celsius. So overall a little bit warmer for me on 17.5 beta two, nothing alarming. I do experience it to get warm or I do expect it to get warm once in a while when you're running processes, but we really haven't been doing anything this time around. Benchmarks seem to be pretty consistent compared to the what's new video I did the other day where we have 2,916 for single core, 7,244 for multi-core compared to what we had the other day. We're a little bit lower for both numbers, but it's fine and they're very close. And typically if I ran this again, sometimes it could be a little faster, but compared to previous versions, it's much better. As you can see all the scores here, it's a few hundred higher for all of the scores, the last beta. So that's pretty good overall. When it comes to battery life, well, let's take a look at that. We'll take a look at the cycle count. So we'll go down to battery battery health, and I'm down to 99% with 161 cycles. You can see coconut battery here, giving all the detail on it. And as far as battery life throughout the week, well, yesterday or yesterday, I had only two hours and 35 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 26 minutes of screen idle time and use 75% of my battery today. I've had two hours and 13 minutes and I've only used, well, we're down to 74%. So 26% of my battery. So it varies from day to day. However, by the time I go to bed, I usually have about 40% left, sometimes 30 or so. Some other people have better battery life though. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.5 beta two, well, if you're on beta one, I would definitely install it. Other than that though, I'd probably wait until beta three comes out and see if there's any big changes so far. There's not a whole lot of changes that weren't installing this unless you're beta testing, maybe third party side loading or something like that over the web. Other than that though, I think it's probably best to wait and see how stable it is. It seems pretty good, but it still has a little ways to go. As far as what you had to say, let's go ahead and take a look at some of your comments. Quad rider Honda said I'm on 17.4.1 on 15 pro max, getting about eight hours screen on time from 100% to 20% left. Um, Dusain says I live in India and weather conditions here are hot, but 17.4 was managing this heat pretty good. But as soon as I upgraded to 17.4.1, my phone has become a hot iron. Like it gets heated within my pocket. Then I have to place it somewhere to cool down. Forget using it outside. It gets hot within my home. Chris Palmer, four, nine, eight, three said I've been using iOS 17.4.1 public release on my iPhone 15 pro battery life is good. Overall, I've experienced more idle battery drain than normal. I usually experience 5% drain overnight. Now it's more like 10% overnight. I still get decent all day battery life with light to moderate use during a heavy day of usage. I do find I am searching for the battery charger more than I should. I haven't experienced any major bugs. John M two, seven, two, three said I have iOS 17.5 beta two, and it's the best version of iOS 17. So far, everything runs smoothly fast without lag and the battery life is perfect. iPhone 10 S Android's backup. Seven, nine, six, six says iOS 17.5 beta two on my 14 plus battery life is now kind of good. It improves significantly over beta one, no major bugs detected. Noah Messer 5023 said running iOS 17.5 beta two on my 15 pro max. And it's been pretty good. The only minor issue I have is micro stuttering all over the operating system. Hopefully beta three or the final release of 17.5 fixes the micro stuttering, but everything else is good, including battery life. Can't wait for iOS 17.5 beta three, along with the final release of iOS 18. Love your videos, Aaron. Thank you. Belly 81 said I'm using iOS 17.5 beta two. And so far the battery performance has been poor on my 14 pro in two hours and 30 minutes of screen time. It's used 45% of my battery and my phone's battery health is at 97%. Before the update, I would have only used about 20% of the battery in the same amount of time. So that's everything with iOS 17.4.1 and iOS 17.5 beta two. If you found any additional features I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron.
I'll see you next time.